Hey guys, this is DFD, aka Dark Frozen Depths, back with a little bit of Elsword here. Now, the reason why this game's kind of running a little bit slow is probably because of where I'm at. But, um, I don't know, maybe I should teleport to an um, area that doesn't get much activity. Yeah, like my guild base. But, um, reason why I'm doing this video is simply because of the simple fact that there's been a lot of people just wondering about my um, my gear setup. And the whole deal with that is the simple fact that it's like... I did manage to get this um, maximized, but it took a lot of seriously strong sockets. And some of them are just flat out normal. Like, for instance, on my armor here, I have a 339 socket, which is roughly, um, a, I'd say, a 3% one. But I do have some, like... Um, like the five fives is like a five percent one. I think the eight thirteen is a six percent one. But um, that's the whole thing. It's like I got different sockets and whatnot. It took a lot to try and get this. Like you see, I have a lot of random effects that have maximize on it. And then there's a few that gave me some HP. Some that gave me some re reduced damage. But um, the main thing I tried to do was get a lot of random effects that would help me out. Especially some of the set effects, too, because I got a set effect that gives me re reduced damage like this, too. But the, um, with some of the equipment sets. But the whole thing is the fact that it's like, I really, really tried to, um, socket the crap out of Maximize in order to get this thing. Like, for instance, my, um, Perky Sauce weapon. I can tell you right now that the, um, the formula for 1% is, I'd say, the level required times 1.5 plus 8. That's the supposed theory for um, 1% in the sockets, aside from HP, which is totally different. I think it's um, I think it's um the same thing, only it's times um, 15, and then plus 85. But um, remember, level required in this case 85 times 1.5 plus 8. Which is roughly like 130 something or whatever for um, this perky sauce weapon. But um, you see the max mass socket right there that says 1626. That's a 12% socket on this weapon. So any level 85 equipment you have, that's a that's the highest socket you will ever get on a weapon. Cut that in half for um, armor. So I got like a 12% socket and a few 10% ones. So just looking at this, I got roughly 62% on the, the weapon alone. Not factoring in anything else. Now, the main thing with that is the simple fact that it's like... It took a lot of Sage Stones to redo this. And without Sage Stones, you ha have almost no chance ever to really sip and get this 100% and um, maximize or critical for that matter. So you really want to try and resocket as much as possible with Sage Stones. You might be able to get high up there with um, the 8% ones you can probably get from the Ice Burners, the special ones. But you won't come close. You want the Sage ones. Oh, you want to get wedges too to up your equipment. But I also sat and did this on the um, weapon costume because that's another thing you can socket as well. Especially if it's an ice burner one like I got right here, you get two sockets. So I got roughly a um an 11% socket for maximize, and then I, I got a um a 12% one for attack speed. Actually, no, I think that's a 10% for maximize and a 12 for for attack speed. But yeah. That's one thing else to pay attention to, what you're getting for um, some of your sockets. And naturally, in the armor section, it's cut in half, too. Which is why I'm only getting, like, 813 for this, opposed to the, um, the 1626. But that's something to know about. And the other reason why I don't need the socket critical is because of my title. Like, for instance, it says, choose your title, which is why my critical is right here. However, when I put my um, Lennox title on... Oh, for ruin. Critical becomes zero, but it got a chance for the forced of it, so that's why I don't need critical sockets. Nice little thing to know. And even still, that little measly 22% was like a 15% chance. If this set effect works, it would have gave me 35% critical for like a few seconds. But, um, you can also socket a um, costume suit, which is why I suggest getting one if you aren't too, like, hopped up on the looks. Like, for a while, I didn't give a crap about stats and what's going for looks. At least when it came to the costume suit. But eventually I found one I liked, so I got it. But, um, socket that too. Socket your, um, 
your gear as well, your arm costume pieces. But there's two things that you need to know about that tend to um, violate the whole socketing rule. One thing happens to be the simple fact that equipment, like equipment can go up to a certain level, like 85 in the case of my um, equipment, but the socket values I need is for level 90. So I'm actually getting less than 1% when you factor those in. So it might be 12% for a level 85 character, but for a um, level 90 character, it's probably like, like it'll say 12% for a level 85 character, but it'll probably say somewhere between like, I say 10 and 9% for a level 90 character. It depends on the differences. But that's one thing that violates the rule. The other thing that happens to violate the rule is the fact that your costumes follow your level regardless. So just take your normal level and do it. Now, before, in a previous patch, you actually could get level 99 sockets, but only need level 90 values. You now just get the level 90 values, period, point blank. That's all you get. Because level 90 is the highest amount you'll need for something. So just off of the top of my head, that's... I'd say... 140 or 135, I think. Let's see here, 90. So that's, um, yeah, 135 plus 8, which makes 142 for 1%. That's the most you'll ever need. So off the top of my head, that's 1420, which is, um, well, it's roughly about the same for this. Like you see this on character thing. Like, there's your 10% value right there, 1430. Because they do they do round up, so keep that in mind. So you got to keep that in mind. They do round up. But, yeah, that's the main thing you got to pay attention to when you socket. It's just the values that pop up and what you're socketing. Because, again, level 85 values, but I'm a level 99, so count me as a level 90 socket value down here. So, all in all, this, um, this maximized value I got right here is about... I'd say 160% total, because you know there's a normalization thing where the higher you get, the less value you get. For a while, I was actually in a 25% efficiency stage, so that means one-fourth of the sockets is actually going to the normal value. So that's something to keep in mind. But that's the main thing about socketing. But there's also another little socketing rule that tends to get violated. Now, normally you get 6% sockets max. 12% if you got Sage Stones. However, there's a few sockets that actually do manage to violate this. From what I've seen, it's Awakening stats, but it's definitely the Movement and Jump. Because looky here, this counts as an Armor Socket, but it's giving me more than any other socket I've got right here. Like this and this, especially this one, the Movement Increase. Now, if I was to say anything, those are close to 18 to maybe even 20%. So, that's one thing to know. When you socket movement and jump, if you get a really, really high stage socket on that, you won't even need to socket it anywhere else. So if you're going for it, do it. Because you only need about roughly, like, I'd say 15% to both, but those gave me more. Especially combined with other things that are increasing the stats. But, um, yeah, that's the thing about sockets. You're trying to, um, do as best you can on that one. Main reason I'm doing this video is because I got, like, asked a few questions of, like, how I got that high. It's just a matter of trying to pay attention to things and then trying to redo stuff so it works for you. Because here's another thing, too. I also have values for this. That's off the Magic Necklace. You don't need the socket MP game. If you do need to socket anything, it's definitely maximized because then you, you're you sitting up jumping the randomness value of your range over here, as you can see. Like, normally it's factor in any attack power range between 13k to 36k, roughly, for my physicals. Now it only factors in the maximum because I got full maximize. So it's like I got 36,000 attack power all times when it comes to physical hits. It won't even randomize. But um, you definitely want to socket maximize. You definitely want to socket critical if you don't have ways around it. Because some classes get critical boosts. Sometimes you can find equipment that will do it. Too bad you can't get the for run title. That negates all critical socking, period, point blank. But um, you might need additional damage, but that's only if it's player versus player. Critical and maximize is used anywhere, period, point blank. It doesn't matter what people tell you. Yeah, additional damage is more useful in player versus player, but you still need critical as well. So critical and maximize is guaranteed to be used everywhere. Specialization is only dependent on your um, character. Like, To be quite honest, 
the specializations for Aisha is only good for an elemental master. The other two don't need it because Boy Princess, while she might memorize more than a DW, the um, Dimension Witch, but a Boy Princess, she's more suited just to cranking out skills, especially since seeing that um, she gets a damage boost and whatnot from a distance. Dimension Witch, however, fires off skills so quickly and so fast that she doesn't even need to memorize. She really doesn't. So these specializations, it depends not only on your quest, but who, um, what your specialization does for your character in general. Like, I'd say get these for any egg quest, period, point blank. Because they all deal with his, um, DP gauge. But you might or might not need Awakening Charge. If you're Transcendent, you're probably going to want to Ring of Fury. <coughs> Sorry about that. But yeah, if you want... If you want more Awakening Charge, you're definitely going to go after a Ring of Fury. You might even need to socket it more, especially for somebody like a Chung or Aura, who's very beneficial with Awakening. Ein is, so is um, Reckless Fist. There's a few classes like that. Well, Ravens in general. But, um, Awakening Time, same case, it's dependent on the quest. But, generally, I wouldn't even socket Awakening Time or Awakening Charge and just get a Ring of Fury. But, um... Definitely try to have at least some reduced damage, because that helps, period. Like, you're absorbing some of the damage away from you whenever you take a hit. Even if you're a lower class character, it's still the same case. It's like, I got 292,000 HP right now. Like, that could actually save me from when I sit and um, get hit with an attack that does 300,000 and I'm at full health. It will actually prevent me from inst instantly dying. It will take out most of my HP instead. So, like, saying something would normally damage me for 300,000, that would sip and remove 30,000 off it, so that's 270,000. So, if I'm at full health, I'll survive it. That's good for something like heroic mode, maybe. But you definitely want some reduced damage, period, point blank. In fact, if I get more Sage Stones, I'll try to re-socket some of these in order to better augment their stats so I can get a little bit more reduced damage. But, um, you're going to want that. You definitely want attack speed. Doesn't matter what anybody says, 20% attack speed, all times. That's one of the first things you socket. Because if you can't attack fast, you're not going to be able to react fast either. Attack speed determines how much, how quickly your character can even stop its animations and whatnot too. Attack speed affects all your animations, so you're going to want that. The only exception to that rule is if you're in something like, oh say, like... Like, PvP with a Dimension Witch, she has more hit stun when she's got lower attack speed. But then again, she's got a skill that increases some of it anyways. But, it's only for the really picky who don't want to sip and have it have it below um, 20%. Just don't go no lower than, than, I'd say, 15 or maybe even 10% if you're try, trying to be risky. But, in the case of um, speed-hungry characters or players and whatnot, you're definitely going to try and get as close as possible to that 30%. But there's ways to boost it, too. There's titles for it. But, um, movement and jump speed, like I said, you might not want more than 10 or 15%, really. But one good socket covers that. Even without the sages, one good socket covers all that. So keep that in mind. But if I were to suggest sockets, then you're definitely going to want attack speed first at 20%. Maybe 15 if you're really trying to save your slots. 10% move and jump, at least. And then you want at least 40% to both critical and maximize, period, point blank. Then after that, just go for red damage and anything else. That's pretty much my suggestion on it. Now, depending on your character and class, that can differ again. And then on top of that, your equipment, but that's the whole thing about it. And then the biggest thing is the fact that there's been a lot of discrepancies along with it too. Like some people say, oh, you should get 50% maximize or 50% critical or something like that. Here's the thing. I'm going off of those suggestions and whatnot, but trying to put it at more reasonable levels because 40% maximum is enough to sustain anybody, and that almost completely negates the little um, power range too. Because 50% will mean it'll take it'll factor in your your normal stat number up to the little possible maximum it gives. Like if I had 50%, it would factor in 25,000 physical to 35,000 physical randomly with each attack. So, yeah. But maximize 40% is good enough. Critical, definitely 40% on that. Because here's the thing. There's a um, trait. Like, say, for instance, I go into my skill set. And I go down to, like, the screwdriver. 
this enhanced trait forces all critical hits but lowers the power of 80%. Somebody else did some numbers on this video. I mean, a video with numbers on it that you can look up on YouTube. I sor Sorry, I don't know the link or anything. But the thing is, if you have 40% critical, that negates this trait. So just socket critical and just not even worry about that trait. That trait sucks, period. Nobody should ever get that trait, ever. It's not that hard to get critical, especially if you have a set like mine. If you get a five-piece effect for the glitter set, you do not need critical. If you got five-piece dragonic, you do not need critical. If you got over ruin, you do not need critical. If you got heroic piece set effects that increase your critical rate, you do not need critical. I mean, you do not need the critical trait. So, regardless of what you sit up and get, do not get that skill trait for force critical hits. It is a waste. You're just lowering the damage you can do just for the chance of having force critical hits when you really should just do it normally. But, um,. Yeah, you're going to want 40% critical, period, point blank. And then I'd say at least 10% red damage on top of that just to be safe. So if I was to summarize that, you want 20% speed first, 10% move and jump, 40% maximize, 40% critical, and 10% and red damage. After that, do whatever. But that's my suggestions for all classes, just as a base. Now, when you get into other classes, it's like, the Aisha's might get, get better off with the MP gain, especially Void Princess. But the Chung's will be better with the Awakening Charge. Auras and um, Ads might be better with Specialization. You get the picture. But again, just to really clarify that point, 40% Critical, 40% Maximus, 20% Attack Speed, 10% Move, Jump, and Red Damage. Just to summarize all of that. You do that, you'll be a nice little base level for all the stuff you need to hit, hit into. And keep in mind, you don't really need to socket that much if you're not near the end of the game. Like, when you start hitting the Lanox section, that's where you might, might need to start paying attention to your sockets. Everything else can just follow through with just normal gear. But one last thing I need to also set up and bring up, too, is an interesting little thing. The L Resonance um, tree. I've been hearing a lot of mixed stuff with this. This. Now, all I can sit up and say is this. There's a few things you should not ever put any points into, period, point blank. Do not put in any attack and defense increases, ever. Don't put in the ED gain, ever. And my suggestion to you is to not even worry about the hyperactive skill damage, either. Because 9 times out of 10, you're not even going to use hyperactives. The only time you use hyperactives is in Aretta. Like, I got a skill tree set right here that's very good for Aretta. You do not need hyperactives outside Aretta. Trust me. Maybe PvP, but chances are the match is going to end before you get to use it. But that's the whole thing with that. Don't ever put it in those. Now, what else you what you should put it into is dependent. Like, everybody benefits from the HP MP. Everybody benefits from the activation rate or the um, attribute resistance. Everybody benefits from skill cooldown and MP cost, regardless of what anyone says. Because you want to use your skills more often. You want to use your skills with less MP. You will always benefit from those, period. Don't matter what anybody says. If you're really hunting down items, the drop rate will work. However, it does not work for the void weapon, so anybody spamming as Fusion Theory Dungeon, do not go for drop rate. Do not go for drop rate just for that dungeon, because you it will not work in there. What does work in there is something else, but I'm not going to explain that one. you got to find it on your own. But the biggest thing you need to pay attention to is probably your skill damages, depending on which ones you use. Like, I use a lot of strength and bravery skills, so upping those would actually help me out. But the biggest thing is the EXP gain. Now, on this character, I don't have any EXP gain, because this is my main. However, on my Ashura, who is going to be my grinding mule for ERP, I want EXP gain into her as much as possible, because that also increases the L resonance points you can get for grinding. Keep that in mind. That's a very big one. So that's why you need at least two cap characters. One to try and unlock ERP, and then start getting some just to start up your second character. Once your second character's up to level 99, that's where you give all the EXP gain into them, provided you don't want to change that later, because I don't give a crap about my Ashura outside being a grinding mule. But you want to get all EXP gain for her. And in my case, I'll get all EXP gain for her. And then 
that just fuel points into my um, DW, so I can just get this stuff. This is how I got the other part of my my um that video with with all the stuff broken down because here's the thing, Dimension Witch has an insanely large MP gain with her um magical makeup skill right there. I got the trait that increases it even further, so she gets roughly three times the MP gain just off of that. But at the same time, she's got passive for more, using Energetic Body gives you more MP gain, and on top of that, lowers the cooldowns of skills used under it. And then on top of that, also increases the um, physical attack too. So yeah, that's how I'm able to skill spam so much and do so much damage on top of my gear and my sockets. So that's another thing to keep in mind. And this fuels it even th further, because if I maximize the skill cooldown, I mean skill consumption, then that pretty much makes a 300 MP move cost mm, roughly 225 MP. That's a big difference. And in the case of the skill cooldown, that's minus 25% skill cooldown on all this stuff. However, it stacks with it, my energetic body passive, which means minus 55% cooldowns. That cuts down this 90% cooldown on magical makeup to less than 45 and it lasts a minute, so I can recast it and still have some time to sip and just save up so I can just do another um, energetic. So yeah, that pretty much breaks down my little um, setup in, in general. Now, one last thing, you use the pet, but it doesn't really do too much on it. Now, the thing with the pet is the simple fact that you gotta sip and try and get its affinity all the way up so it gets a little bonus to its skill damage and whatnot, because it even says it right here. Like, there's your normal stats right there on it. On this skill damage is like 200% and a whole bunch of fireballs to do 550. But when it's in special status, it increases accordingly with the affinity level. Max out your affinity, it does the most damage. Same case with your healing. Better heal with more affinity. However, personality-wise, just get the shot insensible. And from what I can tell, they did change these little things a little bit more. But if you get it down to this little quadrant right here, which takes um minus 60. Six and I mean minus 67 and minus 67, then you're going to do that. But the trick with getting it that far is to sip and feed it nothing but the fruits and seeds and um, QPL jellies, but also sit up and relog after you sip and got a like a 5% affinity in increase, and then you'll sip and start boosting it towards where it needs to go, which is a shy sensible range. That's how you get a lot of um, pet attacks off too, especially considering the fact that your MP gain affects your pets. And it takes about 250 MP for this pet to fire, um, fire off an uh, attack, which is like right about here on this bar. So yeah, keep that in mind. This first bar is its hunger level, but uh, it'll refill itself eventually. I even got it on auto feed, as you can see. But yeah, that pretty much just sums up the, all the um, stuff that I gotta say. Like, pay close attention to this video, you can actually make practically any quest pretty strong in um, dungeons. So, that's all you really just need to know, aside from trying to enhance your stuff. However, if you do need a little bit more of a boost in order to try and pull this stuff off, you can use an alchemist. However, alchemy will not work on it on um, costume stuff, so the costume weapons, especially IV ones, the costume suit, all this stuff I have right here on the side, won't work on that so don't try it and a blacksmith can help you enhance because to be quite honest it's not hard to get these plus nines that i have right here it really isn't just use a blacksmith and hope for the best and then on top of that since i'm using secret dungeon gear is rather easy to replace so unless you have something like heroic hander gear or something that'll take a long time to get the void weapons don't try to don't try to enhance it without um protection equipment like if you do have those don't try to do that if you don't have them, however, like these secret dungeon sets, you can just enhance them over and over again to try and replace them. Only downside for me is the fact that I lose all the sages for that. That's why I haven't tried to push them to plus 10. But anyways, that's all I got to say about the setup and everything, guys. Anything else really just comes down to your preference or ability or whatnot, because there's a lot of different skills that do whatnot, but you still gotta pay attention to your quests, because like I, like I said, some things are just standard. Like Dimension Witch, always should have magical makeup, Always should have this um, energetic body. Teleport just in case you gotta move around. Plus there's a um, passive for her that increases her additional damage off it. But yeah. But that's all I really got to say guys. And I may or may not do a bit more breakdown videos or whatnot. But that's only if you guys request them. But 
that's all I got to say. Take care.